Welcome to Lee and Kill, and welcome back. Uh, thanks to all of you guys' support. Um, it's one of been our best videos uh, through the year, and in our channel per se, uh, our company analysis for Bank of America. Uh, we did in collaboration with one of our good friends, Orlando, uh, that he helped and he gave his stock analysis for Bank of America. So we decided to keep on with these stock analysis. Uh, and on today's video, we want to share with you guys our analysis on the Walt Disney Company and the stock. And as a whole of a company, we want to discuss lots of things. Uh, so we want to share with you guys something is very uh, exciting for us that uh, these thing videos have been uh, very interesting for you guys. So, especially when it comes to the Walt Disney Company, it's one of our main positions in the stock market. It's actually our anchor company in the stock market. So, we wanted to share with you guys our thoughts or analysis on this stock company. So, let's start right ahead. So, the Walt Disney Company is in the midst of trying to recover almost a year after a global pandemic that hit worldwide it affected multiple areas in the economy and especially disney uh yet the company has found ways to stay profitable through all of this even though some of its main revenue sources have been greatly affected such as parkins recreation sector the movies revenue and the cruise line uh that's part of the park and recreation sector but we want to uh separate it in this case because if you've noticed uh, there's no cruise line worldwide that's been working. So just like other cruise lines, the Disney cruise lines have been staggered as well. Keeping this in mind, the company has found a golden egg uh, with their streaming services. Uh, for some may have thought that Disney came late to the streaming uh, services fight. And they have found themselves in the surprise that the global entertainment company is responsible for one of the biggest streaming platforms there is today, and that's Disney+. Plus. Yet, we want to discuss how the company is today, and how will the company be fit in the future. And this is what really matters to us, that the investors or the people that are thinking about investing in the company. We want to know if the company is right right now and if it's profitable for the future uh, and the answers to these questions can vary depending on on the people you ask so we want to focus more of this analysis about facts uh, and let's analyze what we have and after that on uh, the later part of this video we'll give our personal conclusions and what we think uh, that it's the analysis for the Walt Disney Company based on the information that we did so you can build your own opinion uh, about this company. So let's jump right to it. Uh, let's start with the state of the company. Uh, and the things that we can just see in plain sight, um, as of February 2021, the Walt Disney Company and Shanghai Disneyland are the only theme parks and part of the theme park and resort uh, sector that are open. The Paris Disneyland, the Hong Kong Disneylands are closed, and while California Disneyland and California Adventures are struggling uh, with state's regulation in California to figure out a way to how to open back up to the public, uh, they're still in that midst of not reopening yet. But keeping this in mind, you will always, as we mentioned, you need to know that the cruise lines are shut down, all of them, and including Disney. So uh, during the last 12 months, Disney has announced around 32,000 layoffs of employees thanks to the pandemic, affecting all areas of the company from parks and recreation to the company sectors to cruise line to everything that has to do with the company. Even though at this time, as time has passed by and things are starting to go back to some sort of normality, employees are being brought back. This has been a big area for concern for both the company and for investors. 
In their quarterly earnings, Disney announced uh, an earning of 32 cents per share on revenue with a $16.25 billion in revenue, which beat all expectations of analysts that they thought that the Disney company was going to report 45 cents of losses per share. So they beat drastically expectations in this quarter of earnings that they announced this past February. So something very important that you need to take in consideration is that the park revenue sector decreased by 53%, while other sectors such as the streaming services increased a significant amount up to 73%. So as the park sectors have been decreasing thanks to the pandemic when most of the parks can be open or in limited capacity, the streaming services has been taking lots of lots of uh, that burden in their back and has been weighing in lots of the revenue for the company. So let's jump into that streaming services. We have the Disney Plus, which is the biggest uh, for them right now, as well as ESPN Plus and Hulu. So as of June tw- 2nd, as of January 2nd, sorry, of 2021, the current am- amount of Disney Plus subscriber reached 94.9 million subscribers, which is 9% of just the past December 2020. So in just one month, they had a 9% increase in subscribers, as well as ESPN on their year reaching uh, 12.1 million subscribers and Hulu a 30% up to 39.9 4 million subscribers. This increase in ESPN and Hulu can be attributed to the fact that Disney has created uh, this bundle where they offer the three platforms. Uh, and for some people, this is very attractive. Uh, I know personally, this is what I have the bundle where I can have Disney, ESPN, and Hulu because as time passes by, less and less people are using. Uh, cable television or having contracts with cable companies, they're heading towards more streaming services. And with this, Disney capitalized because it has all those friendly, friendly and IPOs into Disney Plus. They have for the sports people, the ESPN Plus and for the Hulu, for people who want to watch some series, some sitcoms and more serious types of content. They have that for every every client or every person that wants different tastes. So the bundle service is going off the charts for them. Well, Disney has focused on creating content on their main streaming platform, Disney Plus, and compared to other streaming services, they have a large library of IPOs that gives them that advantage to develop and provide unique programs. Um, in the past couple of years, when the Disney Plus platform was launched, they were struggling with this until later throughout last year. They had their massive success with their Star Wars IPO with the series The Mandalorian. And thanks to that success, it opened the door to keep on developing more programs based on this franchise. And just like Star Wars help uh, in the streaming services with the success of The Mandalorian, thanks to their success in the the movie business, the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they have opened the bridge so that Disney can create MCU programming in their steaming platform that links into the movies. And this uh, past few months, they have had great success with uh, their program of Wanda Maximoff, one of the Avengers in the movies, and it's dominating the streaming platform with her series WandaVision. Something very important that the company needs to consider in the consistency is to have that consistency with their content in the platform. As we uh, mentioned uh, through this video, uh, the first year of the launch, not many unique program was uh, being placed in the streaming platform. Lots of people were just catching up on old videos, on old movies, on old programs from Disney Plus and not many new IPOs or many new programs were developing. But as time passed by, the company has focused on creating and streaming new content and this will keep the platform competitive to other streaming services such 
as well known as keep subscribers engaged year around with their platform and that is something that they are very focusing on if you've noticed uh after the mandalorian ended wandavision came out quickly and after uh wandavision is set to end for the season uh falcon and uh, winter soldier series is going to head back up and so on and so forth they are chaining their series and their new content on uh as one ends another begins so that subscribers will keep on staying on the platform and not end their subscription just waiting for another season to come out so this is very important and this is uh very very crucial for their revenue in their streaming services so next up is their parks and resort sector and this is very important because this has been the bread and butter for the disney company throughout these uh last couple of years uh before the streaming services were made so moving into the park and recreation sector of the company we are expecting to have a low turn back to normality as the vaccination programs continue worldwide the states of the pandemic it's, uh, it's becoming more secure which will lead to part to a return to some normality uh, the resort sector of the company in the united states finds itself divided as the walt disney world resort in orlando has been functioning in some capacity and in the california sector disneyland has been closed since the start of the pandemic the company is trying to find ways to open some parts of disneyland resorts in california by creating outdoor activities and events but are struggling with the fact that the California government has been setting up more crucial regulations. In other parts of the world, such as Disneyland Paris, the parks is closed as well as the Hong Kong Disneyland Resort. But there is light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to the resort. We are hoping by the summer of 2021, there will be numerous vaccines and treatment which will lead to the start of a social relaxation of regulation that will permit the opening of the resort as well as startup of the cruise line sector. Good news for the Disney World Resort in Orlando is that the 50th anniversary of is in October, which will likely bring up generous amount of visitors to the resort as well as their new attractions in Epcot Park. So as Disney World in Orlando has been able to keep its door open, through the end of this year, 2021, it's expected for lots of visitors to visit this park thanks to the university, thanks to new attractions opening up, and thanks for the high demand that people have to go on vacations, especially to Disney. So, after saying all this, what are our conclusions for the Disney stock? Well, in our personal portfolio, Disney is our anchor company. We've talked about this year round. We've talked about this a lot. The company has a diversified stream of income as well as the solid fundamentals in their market. Being a company that has its ups and downs during long tenure history, the company has withstand numerous obstacles inside and outside of the company. The most recent is changing CEOs and facing a global pandemic at the same time. As Bob Iger left CEO, Bob Chapek has turned into the Walt Disney World Company CEO and we are facing a global pandemic. So Disney has proven itself to be able to withstand lots of pressure from inside and outside the company and being still uh, revenue effective and being still a successful company. So. The company has been able to reinvent themselves and provide both investors and consumers value. And that's very important. We want the company creates value not just for investors, but for the customers. People love going to Disney. People love Disney. Disney has lots of IPO. Statistically, there are more children that recognize Mickey Mouse than they recognize religious figures. So Disney, in some way or fashion, has become part of your everyday life. So it creates value for the client. It creates value for the customer, which in hand creates value for investors. This is a long-term hold for us. This is one of our pillars in our portfolio, and we expect something very important. If you notice, the stock has been going up recently throughout these days. It's just hit the $2,200 mark. So we are expecting to hit that 230 mark by the end of the year, being very conservative. And by the end of the next five years, we are expecting to reach that $300 mark. So 
for you that are thinking about investing in the Walt Disney Company, that are thinking about diversifying your portfolio, this is one of the best companies that we personally have and that we personally believe in. They have a diversified uh, source of revenue. They provide value, just like we mentioned, not just to investors, but to consumers. And this is a company that has withstand the test of time. So if you're thinking about investing in the Walt Disney Company, if you're thinking about in diversifying your portfolio, Give this a shot. Let us know what you think about this stock analysis. Let us know what you think about this company analysis. Uh, we hope to provide you with more information, better information, so you, that can, you can decide on what you want to do in your investment and just that we can provide that information that you need to make those good investments in the future. So I hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy, and always remember to have that king mentality.